What's up people? Welcome to Interview with Abhimanyu. Please do not forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and press the bell icon because we post awesome interviews every single week. And for all the people who love listening to podcasts, we are available on Spotify and Castbox. Today's episode, you will see a meat eater and a hardcore vegan debate about should we eat meat or not? Should we consume dairy or not? We also discussed uh, animal liberation rights, animal rescue and similar topics. Usually when you see such discussions on the internet, these debates often turn into arguments and before you know people are hurling death threats at each other. Fortunately, this lady is a friend of mine and we tried not to kill each other and we had a discussion in a civil manner. It was a very healthy debate but when it was over, she did not turn into a meat eater, I did not turn into a vegan. But trust me guys, the facts that she presented at the end of the discussion, they were very disturbing, they were very real and we all need to think about them. Ladies and gentlemen, my guest today is a vegan entrepreneur. She calls herself a vegan whore. She is an animal rescuer, an animal liberation rights activist. And she also runs a cafe called The Real Green Cafe, which is, by the way, Maharashtra's first 100% plant-based restaurant. Please welcome the awesome, the amazing Aishwarya Vishwanath. Hello, Aishwarya. Hi. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Uh, we have been trying to do this since a very long time with you. I'm glad you finally, finally yeah, 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 finally here, finally here. Yeah. So, uh, tell me something. For, uh, how, how are things been like? How, how are things? How's work? How's everything? Work is pretty good. I just came back from an awesome holiday. So, still in the holiday hangover. Yes, you went to France, right? Yeah, I went to France, Germany and Belgium. Uh, but about your work, I mean, you work in one of the busiest areas in Pune, right? Yes. So, still you're just so chilled out. I mean, if I have to face that traffic every single day, cruelty against animals is fine, but I would have been really cruel to the staff somehow. You know, it, it just, it's very bad over there, the whole area. So, yeah, how, how do you manage every single day? I and think uh, passion takes over sometimes. And yeah. <laughs> yeah. That motivation that you want to do something hmm. for a cause that you truly believe in. But, yeah, that's like... me up somehow. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. So, yeah. and how, how far is your place from your workplace? It's about 10 kilometers, about half now. So, you do 10k every single day to reach there? Yes. And, <laughs> ah, very cool. So, today is going to be really interesting because on this very table, we have a meat eater, a dedicated meat eater and awesome. a hardcore vegan, right? Awesome. So, <laughs> and uh, people out there on the internet, on the social media, they are killing each other's comments. Yeah. They are like hitting, yeah, yeah they are like death. I keep seeing that all the yeah, time. Yeah, they are like, so people like you and me, yeah. you and me, they are killing each other, like death, yeah. death yeah. threats and all, yeah. yeah. So, let's not kill each other today. I hope so. <laughs> yeah. I yeah. hope so. Yeah. yeah, let's not kill each other today and uh, let's just talk about how did it all begin, like, you know, how did it start? So, I, I know that uh, it's been 10 years now. You, you say nine, I know you say nine yeah. because mithai wali, wo, ghi wali mithai khali, but chill, we'll call, we'll say ten, right? Yeah. So, yeah, let's just start with, yeah, how, the transition, the beginning, everything. Let's just hear the story. Okay, so I was super scared of animals, like dogs, especially dogs. Scared as in? Like, scared as in I had this fear in me, I was very good with uh, like uh, pets, uh -huh. but I was super scared of strays. Okay. And I've always... My dad was in the Air Force, so right. we always lived in campuses hmm. and there are a lot of dogs there. So it was, I was so scared that I would see a dog like two kilometers far and I would do an about turn and go back home. Okay, I was that scared of dogs. Right. And this fear was there in me for a very, very long time. Hmm. And uh, I was in my 12th right. and uh, I saw this tiny, whiny puppy on the side of the door or like of the road and my brother was with me. We were coming back from school and it was there in the corner, crying and whining, and it was, I think, uh, like fully drenched and, you know, it was muddy and stuff. Okay. So, I don't know, something, I don't know, I felt very sad for it and it was tiny, so I, you know, took some courage to go close to it and I had this, you know, like a bag kind of thing. I just somehow just picked him up, put him in the bag and just brought him home. Okay. And, uh, you know, like the Air Force houses are like really good, like they have garden and they have yeah. a garage and the yeah. quarters and stuff. So. I had this huge garden, I was on the ground floor, I had a nice garage. So I just brought him in and kept him there. And I don't know, I was scared, but 
I don't know. I was not feeling scared. Also, like you know, holding him, and it was really nice. But that was just a puppy. So it was when, a puppy. when yeah. it grows, it's gonna be a monster, right? So yeah, didn't you yeah, think about that? Yeah, but at that, no, I didn't think of that at that time. A stray monster with disease. So you yeah, got the yeah, you know. yeah. So I was like, okay, let me keep him. Let him. Let me start feeding him. I, you know, cleaned him up. I started hmm. feeding him. And like two, three after two, three days, I suddenly I was like. I don't feel scared anymore. You know, right. the fear was start. You know, it was starting to wear off. You know, fade right. off it, and I was not feeling it anymore. Okay. And then I started taking care of him. It was like one month. You know, two months. I started taking care of him, and he was good. Like he was growing up. And then you know, because I was very scared of dogs, I did not know like how to really take care of them. And at that point, I didn't know like any vet or anyone. And right. then suddenly, like he developed the skin disease. Mm-hmm. It's a very common disease you'll find in a lot of stray dogs. It, it, it's like the they develop these patches, right? Yeah, yeah. The first it's starts called, disappearing. Yeah, it's called mange. So usually people think, oh, oh, oh it's called mange. Okay. The disease is right. called mange. It's a very treatable uh, disease, but people, you know, like because the first starts going, they think, you know, the dog is mad and the dog is like yeah, really so, sick. So, sorry to intervene, but I just, I, I, I you know, this uh, story, mm-hmm. it's real because my nana, right? So mm-hmm. he's also into animals. He's yeah. not a vegan or anything. Yeah, he loves yeah. meat, but yeah. he loves his animals as well. He loves yeah. dogs, cows yeah, and all. Yeah, yeah. So he lives in, he used to live in a farm. Right. So, uh, so there was this dog. He used to call the dog Kutta. Hmm. Because he, was <laughs> right, Kutta. he had his own dog. Right. Dog had name, but right. this one was called Kutta, and this Kutta had the same disease. You know how did he take care of the dog? Hmm. It might sound a bit, uh, you know, brutal and cruel, hmm. but वो जो आपका floor cleaner होता है ना phenyl जिसको बोलते हैं, he just threw phenyl on him. The dog, you know, whined and all, like cried, wailed and all, yeah. for, and then he got well. I'm not saying that that is the remedy and people should start throwing phenyl on their dogs and all, <laughs> but but yeah, that happened. So yeah, I'll continue with your. <laughs> no, it's not phenyl. Probably some chemical in it works. Maybe disinfectant it. or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So basically, it's just a skin disease. It just happens on the top layer of the skin. It doesn't really go into the body or into the system. Right. It's just a skin disease. Like how we get a fungal infection is pretty much the yeah. same. It's just that the dog loses hair, so it's far as everything for the dog. Mm. So if it loses. It's like a common perception, like oh, it's like sick and it's ill and we should not touch him and it's dirty and stuff oh, like that. Okay. And yeah. from a very nice, healthy puppy, I used to call him Snoopy. He suddenly turned into this, you know, scaly dog with all his fur for yeah, him, I, and I was not understanding what was happening. Right. So being in the forces, we have like a dog squad. So there is a vet there. So my dad actually called him up and he was like, you know, there's this dog. This we are taking care of this pup. Can you help us with a vet? Huh. So he he came down and he gave a couple of injections and within like like say a week he started getting his fur back. He was healthier than before and he was okay. And I think during that time, like taking care, nursing him, he would wait for me. Like I'd come back from school, he would wait for me, and all of that. You know, I kind of got a you know I developed a bond with him okay. and a bond that kind of over overpowered the fear that I had of dogs. Right. And I started looking at all other dogs with a different like. I used to look at them with fear before, but then I was like, probably they sense fear, right. and I shouldn't do that. And I should just be confident. Even if I don't want to touch it, I should just you know just take a deep breath hmm. if I'm around, if the dog is around me. And then I realized I did that a couple of times. The dogs didn't chase, uh, chase me. They were okay. They were around me. They were fine. They would not come to me because I would not call them, but they would not hmm. do anything. Yeah. I was like, why the hell was I getting scared of dogs all these years? You know, like what's happening? Like, All of this was happening, and then in the meanwhile, my mom also found another puppy and okay. brought him home too. Right. And both of them were not technically inside the house; they were outside the house in, in the, the garage. garage yeah. so my mom didn't want to bring it home, you know, bring both of them home because I was in my twelfth class and I had Boats, my board exams, yeah. and, <laughs> and, <laughs> <that, laughs> yeah. and I was spending a lot of time with these dogs. I swear, I didn't play with them. Literally, I said, literally, it was like that only. Like you know, my mom was like, no, 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 we're not taking them home. They can be outside. You can take care of them and all of that, but hmm. they're not coming home. So this was somewhere around rainy season when the dogs came in. Right. Post rainy season, winters came. So I kept blackmailing my mom, like have a heart. It's so cold outside. Only for this winter, they'll be in my room only. I will promise I will study and I will not, you know, like get distracted and all of that. And somehow emotionally blackmail them. This is Puna, right? Yeah, yeah, okay. Puna only, her only. And I brought them home. Right. Got them home, and once they entered our house, <laughs> they didn't go out because. After winter, it was summer, and you know the story. But then, <laughs> even I'm sure your mom and dad must have started loving them as well. My mom, my parents always loved dogs. They had, but it was just that 
in air force you know you keep growing every 3 years you get transferred yeah. and stuff so. but but i have always seen uh, military people and especially yeah. people from the forces right they yeah. always have pets even though they are moving but they mostly they have german shepherd or labrador so they are always yeah so moving. i had this fixation that i should have an alsatian okay. okay always my dad also loved that so alsatian and german this this yeah, yeah, right? yeah, yeah yeah so i always wanted that that was like the dog i wanted but i just picked up these dogs and from the street and they look so i mean they were, i didn't care about the looks honestly yeah. it was just the connection you that you shouldn't if you want yeah. a pet it, yeah. yeah it didn't so you're i not just buying a commodity right exactly yeah. and over a period of time i just got over the fear and i started not just taking care of my dogs i also started taking care of dogs in my right. in my campus so i started with i understood that you know there is a problem or you know, there's a problem of population dog population and i understand i, I didn't know at that time like every 6 months you know they please have, explain like what problem uh basically the dog population you know like dogs they keep multiplying right. and the only way and the only scientific and legal way to control this is to get them sterilized okay that's called an animal birth control program and it is uh, uh you know like it is uh, it is a legal compliance by the supreme court that okay. if you are feeding dogs and taking care of community dogs mm-hmm. you need to get them sterilized right. so what happens is that they don't multiply yeah. and they take care of their area with their very territorial animals yeah, they so are. they take care so they don't allow other dogs to come in hmm. and over a period of time there's no dog, there's no vacuum basically so they keep uh, like the dogs from outside will not come inside hmm. and they are you know they are like, not reproducing yeah they are not reproducing so, so uh, they, the, every single stray dog gets sterilized under this actually you're supposed to get it done okay it, but you know like municipal now it is better like back then when i started doing the rescue work it was all a mess yeah. and i used to privately you know i used to say pro- like pocket money i used to just spend that and <laughs> get the dogs sterilized i, I had there is a organization here called blue cross blue cross Mundra. so okay. i used to tie up with them and uh, they had the contract with the pmc right. to get the dogs sterilized mm. so i every sunday i would be on a dog mission like get you know catch like 10 to 11 okay, dogs okay another question <laughs> getting a dog sterilized you know you still are pro sterilization yes i am so that does that ever you know uh, you know Uh, you know get in conflict with your ideology of not harming animals actually we're not really harming animals here we're really helping them out because every 6 months they get pregnant you're just stopping them from having sex with other dogs is that no it's not <laughs> stopping them from having sex from other like dogs they're producing they're right? producing they still have their hormones active they can still have sex but they won't produce So yeah so yeah, yeah that's my so they so won't reproduce rather i'm not, i'm not i'm not i'm not putting the sword on top of your head but to me if i have to go completely against cruelty or violence against animals yeah. i will still think that doesn't that dog have the right to have a pup or something but then again it is a menace for humans right if we get so many stray dogs yeah. i am pro sterilization yeah. right now yeah. when i yeah. think about yeah. it i don't want stray dogs every single because jitne hain already wo bahut tang karte hain right yeah right. so you don't want that right so i think so there can be a line right where you have to like somehow you can't be all you have to think about your community as well right it's all about thinking about our community honestly it's about the welfare of the animal okay. if get the dog sterilized the dog lives more he's more healthy he or she of the more healthier okay. and stuff like that it's beneficial for the dog as well so does that dog get a single chance to get a single pup I'm just saying no no, no. poor dog <laughs> no come on but no it's all you know you think about it are everyone are all of you all open to like stop buying a dog and just adopting an animal yeah people don't do that they are only breed conscious you know yeah. so what happens to these pups where will they go they how many how many hmm. shelters are there all of them even die like yeah they die yeah. like yesterday in fact today i am in a really very sad mood if you have been to lane 6 and you know there is a dog called lucy who sits who is a white and spotted dog brown color dog I'm sure I must have seen because lane six, lane seven. Yeah, lane these six. These are my uh, so regular. So you usually sit here street meet because Nikhil feeds those dogs. Yes, I've seen the dog. Lucy is. She just got hit last night. Oh. So. When you say got hit, as in. She is no more. No, no, but uh, but. By a car. By a car. Okay. Yeah, that's On the very car. street, lane six, yeah. right in front of your place. Yeah. Oh, sad. So it was that I actually didn't know yesterday night when it happened because I was in the kitchen and stuff, and in the morning I came to know. Like, okay. It was it. So that's what happens to stray animals, you know. The, right. Our population and animal-human co- the conflict is too much. Mm. And if you don't do it, this is the best gift you can do, you know. Control their population, they stay till they do, and they live their life and they die and they go. Right. So unless people are more willing to adopt, mm. 
instead of buying. Yeah, they aren't. So, yeah, so you have to create that have balance. To, right? yeah, yeah. yeah. Let's get back to you. So, <laughs> yeah. So, post that, I was doing a lot of sterilization drives and right. I was in touch with a lot of NGOs and we used to also do adoption camps. So, I was like, if I can adopt strays, there may be more people who can. Hmm. And I wanted to create awareness among people that, you know, they all, they are just need love and affection. Hmm. And they are also like as beautiful as your Labrador. And they are, in fact, more stronger. They're built for this, you know, uh, built climate. For the yeah, they're built. <laughs> yeah. Like their immunity is, you know, you give them dal chawal, they won't fall sick. You do that to a, uh, you know, like a lab, he'll be like sick. Really? You can yeah. feed them dal chawal and they... They are like that strong because they eat from the garbage, you know. So they are yeah. like, their body is strong. Right. Their immunity mm. is stronger. And that you cannot find in breeds. Because what happens is, like uh, breeding, breeders don't follow any protocols. Right. So because of that, their immunity is like, really bad. I, I personally like dogs. I just hate Dobermans. I don't like them. Okay. They are very, I think they are very ferocious and they are always foamy mouths. I, I don't know. So, okay, so aren't they always angry and snappy? It depends. That depends on, see, Dobermans are not a one master dogs, you know. They like only are loyal to that one master. Yeah. So, no, they aren't. They, they bite the <laughs> very master. I, I have friends. Maybe then that. that friend is not taking maybe, care maybe, of Maybe they dog. just keep oh, them no, chained maybe, or something. Yeah, maybe. Because yeah. they're always, you know. Yeah, because they're also an Maybe they're dog. hunting dogs. Are they? They're not really hunting dogs, but they're definitely like guard dogs and stuff. Hmm. And uh, it also is like to do with their genes. Yeah. Like they might have, like the breeding conditions might not have been good. The Head father dog. or the mother would have been aggressive or, you know, things like that. And the mixing happens and yeah. all of those things happen. So. And I have this incident, like, बचपन से काफी कुत्तों के साथ अच्छा रहा है बट डोबरमैन ही एक ऐसा ब्रीड है जो मेरे पीछे भाग गया काटने के लिए जिसको सो या आई डोंट लाइक देम पर्सनली लाइक आई हैव दिस थिंग लाइक आई एम वेंजफुल अगेंस्ट दिस क्रीचर्स एनीवे अगेन सो या आई वंस आई गॉट इनटू द एडॉप्शन थिंग द स्टेरिलाइजेशन थिंग आई एक्चुअली मेट अ लॉट ऑफ पीपल लॉट ऑफ एक्टिविस्ट्स एंड एट दैट टाइम ऑर्कर्ड एंड ऑर्कर्ड या ऑर्कर्ड एंड फेसबुक वाज लाइक आई रिमेम्बर सी योर उस टाइम पे क्या? Because if I if anyone sees my profile, I had a shitty profile, man. I had like the worst profile. <laughs> I, I oh, let's some other day we'll talk about awkward profiles. Yeah, but it was really Wanna shitty. Shit. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I actually connected to a lot of activists through Facebook. Okay. And I would do a lot of adoptions through Facebook. So I was connected to a lot of people. And I just graduated, and it was the time when I was you know going to UK for my studies for my masters. Hmm. So I also wanted to connect with animal activists across the world. So yeah. across at least UK because I wanted to continue doing my activism there also. Yeah. And at that time, all this while I was vegetarian. I, I've always been a vegetarian. I've been a born vegetarian. And it was never a non-vegetarian. So I was always... And uh, family? Same. Same. Vegetarian. Okay. So no one has... Like my dad used to eat meat initially, but then right. he stopped and... We've so all no been one in the family. Yeah, no so one. the transition wasn't that difficult. Like, no, but we were. You did not leave delicious meat and you went. It with is it. never delicious, okay? Please. <laughs> it's not. It's just, you eat raw meat and see, then we'll talk. <laughs> I eat raw meat. You eat and see, <laughs> then we'll talk. <laughs> we, even, yeah, raw food, yeah, we'll talk about that as well. But yeah, let, I'll let yeah, you finish with this. So, uh, yeah, so when I was going to the UK, before that, uh, I was connected to all, all of these UK activists and one of them was a vegan and he used to always keep putting these posts about the dairy industry and mm. the investigations. A lot of uh, activists used to go to these slaughterhouses right. and dairy farms and do undercover investigations. Right. And one of such things, which most of the videos are, if you see are all best, you know, like what happens in US yeah. and yeah. Europe and stuff and there was nothing really Indian, okay. So he would always keep putting and I would always say, oh, you know, India mein to, you know, we love cows and mm. nahi, nahi, nahi hoga, aise nahi hoga because you know they are religious sentiments mm. so they take care and all of that so i always kept you know like pushing that away every time you tell me like you see this you know i'm pretty sure it happens the same mm. in india but i have not listened to him so one day i we had some challenge i don't even remember some random challenge and i lost so he told me that now that you've lost the thing is that you have to see this video okay which i will show and yeah. you have to see the whole video this is an indian thing this is okay. no longer a west thing this is an indian thing uh-huh. so you need to see it right I was like shit, because I don't, I don't like seeing gory videos, okay, I know yeah. what the thing is, I know the truth, so I was like, oh, I have to see it, so because I lost that challenge, I had to see it, so huh. it was a 10 minute video, and the video was about the Indian dairy cows, it right. was a horror story of Indian dairy, it was, okay. there was no West thing at all, right. it was all Indian tabelas, all the undercover investigation for those tabelas in Haryana, and have Haryana. you heard of the term fuka or cow blowing? 
when it comes to work. No? no. That's one of the reasons why I've read it somewhere that Mahatma Gandhi left drinking cow's milk. So they actually blow air into cow's hmm. vagina to give that, you know, feel that she's pregnant or something while milking the cow. It's, okay. It's okay. called cow blowing. Okay. It's, no. It's like, there are, okay. And it has been, uh, people in Africa also do that in India. Every It's everywhere. So. Okay. Really, as, okay. So as, I'll tell you the story. I've seen worse stuff than that. Okay. So this is That's nothing. That's one of I just remember. This is nothing. Like, like this is honestly, what you're saying is, okay, it might be like bad, but I've seen like really bad stuff. Right. So, and then I saw this 10 minute video and I couldn't even like cross like two and I was like, shit. And because all this while I would, you know, always call myself like, I was to be very proud to call myself I'm a pure animal, uh, you know, vegetarian animal uh-huh. lover and you guys, because I know a lot of people in the rescue, right? like they are dog lovers mm. or cat lovers, but you know, they would eat chicken or you know, over discussing over the karapati of a dog. Mm. You know, they didn't make that connection. So that would irritate me like anything, you know, like what the hell, like if you call yourself animal lover, then a chicken is as good as a dog, you know, you cannot differentiate it, you know, they are same, same thing beings, they feel the same pain. So, I would get very irritated, so I used to always call myself like, oh, I'm pure animal lover, you know, and a vegetarian animal lover. But what if we are designed to... Okay, wait. Yeah, yeah <laughs> like, I'll let you I'm getting I, I, I get a lot of questions, yeah, 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 I'll, I'll let you finish, yes. So, uh, then I saw this video and I was like, shit, like, I saw, like, really bad stuff, like, how they impregnate the, uh, like, the cows, uh-huh. and they have no proto- no protocol at all, though they're supposed to follow just, like, they pure don't. hands, pure fists, yeah. that go inside the vagina, and stuff yeah. like that it was, like, really gory, and I was like, oh my god. They take the calf out. They, they take the calf yeah, out. literally, physically, they pull yeah, it out. Yeah, they pull it out. Yeah. Yeah. And the calf, if it's a male, goes straight to a slaughterhouse. Uh-huh. If it's a female, she goes through the same cycle. Right. And usually nine months is what, you know, like every nine months she's impregnated. That right. is, every time the calf is born, they take out the milk, the calf is separated and all of that. They again through Repeat the same, the same process. process. Yes. And every time it's done and that is just to the for the milk part. But to mm. produce more milk, they openly use something known as oxytocin which is a hormone to uh, lactate, you know, it makes you lactate. Yeah. Even for females, for human females, they use it. Hmm. For women who have problems, who are not able to breastfeed their children. Right. So they have that. Hmm. And it was like, I was like, are you serious? This is India. And and it was like, like you know, took me like to a different level. Yeah, and I just couldn't believe it. I just couldn't believe it. I was like, it was in Haryana. Hmm. It was in Gujarat. Right. And it was in South also. So hmm. South may also they... Like the cows go for leather, hmm. like for you know, like they slaughter yeah. house, and it was like really bad. I was like, shit, and that was it. Like that night, I saw that video, and I still remember. And I was like, it was in the night I saw it, and next day morning, I swore to myself that I will just not contribute to this. Like hmm. I just gave up. Okay. So it was a very radical decision for me overnight that I won't do it hmm. because I knew people were like vegan for years, and I didn't know about it. I was kind of you know ignoring it and not. Like really, you know, thinking that what will be and all. So I was like, that's it. I'm going to quit everything. Right. And that was overnight. Hmm. I quit. And initially it took me like first three, four days, few months. I was okay because I had this image always. And I, what I would do is I would remind myself every time. If I would still like, you know, like think like, oh, like, oh, this is so good. I'm like, and I love sweets. Okay. So hmm. for me, it was a big challenge to get over sweets. I was like yeah. big Rasmalai, Gulab Jamun fan and all. Right. So it was like very difficult for me to, it would be right in front of me. And you know, like I would be like, oh. it takes a lot of resolve to be a vegan. Yeah. So that's why that first year, like you said, I used to, you know, sometimes like not say no, if I go out in a social hmm. gathering and if I'm supposed to have it, I would just have a bite and stuff. And I would not like have the whole thing, but I would not say no either. So mm. that first year, I don't consider myself because I was still transitioning. And the day I stepped into the UK is when I completely left it because I knew that from here I have alternatives and I will only have alternatives. Plus the environment was more conducive because people it, were more aware of the It was, it this, was, yeah. it was. Yeah. So when I went to UK, I went like every superstore had like a vegan separate, section. yeah, vegan section mm. and the cheeses were there, the curds were there, the... Ice creams were there and my mom here used to always feel bad, you know, bachari bachi wa ja ke to kuch nahi kha payegi and all of that. <laughs> mom ko waisi hota hai agar bachche ki nahi kha rahe ho. Yeah, and you know, she would actually on Skype calls, she would not even tell me like she had something at right. home because she would feel that, oh shit, 
I am not having it. Mm. But you know, at all times that I would be like with a big tub of ice cream, and I'm like, you know what? I'm having a vegan ice cream. Yeah. I'm like, are you serious? <laughs> like, what? <laughs> what is this happening? So yeah. I was doing that a lot, and that's how. I mean, once I turned, like, once I was in the UK, I completely stopped everything. Right. I got into activism. Okay. I was there for about two and a half years. Let's talk about your activism. Like, what all did you do? So, like, yeah, were you I going mean, out? Because my knowledge mm-hmm. for vegan veganism and people who <laughs> you know are activists, it's very aggressive and violent. Because my knowledge comes from YouTube, mm-hmm. and people are always out on the streets calling people yeah. and telling them that you shouldn't do this, you shouldn't do this. Look at this. Most of the stuff the vegans say it mm-hmm. makes sense. It's mm-hmm. right because you are being cruel to animals. Mm-hmm. You know? So milk, even if you are not killing them, even if you are taking milk from the animals mm. or you're taking the poultry industry, mm. right? Everything they treat the animals like very, you know, barbarically. Yeah. It's very, it's very sad when you see that. I've seen that, mm. though I still eat egg right. and chicken. Right. But yeah, I know right. what they go through. Right. So what was your activism like? Because sometimes, okay, I did this thing with a friend of mine. I'm a meat eater. This friend of mine, mm-hmm. another meat eater. Mm-hmm. Both come from Rajput families. Where mm-hmm. we, it's like a process, like. हमें खाना है आता है बनाते हैं खाता है वैसे इट्स लाइक कुछ अलग नहीं सोचा कभी इसके बारे में व्हिच इज अ फैक्ट सो वी सो दे या सो देयर वाज दिस थिंग सो आई सम आई डू वेयर्ड स्टफ फॉर कंटेंट अपने लिए जब मुझे कुछ चाहिए होता है सो आई प्ले डिफरेंट गेम्स सो आई सैट विद दिस फ्रेंड ऑफ माइन वी वर इन लद्दाख चिलिंग ओके सो रात को अब लद्दाख में यू डोंट हैव मच टू डू रात को सो वी वर जस्ट ठंड में बैठे हैं एंड देन आई सेड क्या करूं क्या करूं सो आई जस्ट ट्रिगर्ड दिस कन्वर्सेशन एंड देन आई वाज लाइक आई वाज बीइंग द वीगन एट दैट टाइम Right. Oh, okay. So I was being the vegan, and I was uh, talking to my friend, and we were debating, arguing that why I was giving all the saving the planet and all, and so mm-hmm. the conclusion it started at eight p.m., ended at four a.m. with you know bros not talking to each other like fuck off, fuck off, and we slept. Like you don't understand, you don't understand, you can't sleep. Though I was a meat eater, <laughs> you know, both of us were meat eaters. But the thing is that I figured that. you cannot tell a person not to i just concluded that you cannot change every single one it's difficult so it's not difficult it's nearly impossible because people find sense out of eating meat as well i won't blame every single one of them i won't say they're wrong i won't say i'm wrong but yeah the industry what what they do to the animals mm. there has to be there has to be certain that's my opinion that mm. we need to regulate it properly the, uh. By regulate, I mean. What very, What is your definition of a human way of killing an animal? Yeah, I'll tell you what. So since we, you said that you uh, had this connection with your dog, right? Mm-hmm. The dog. So let's go back evolution yeah. wise. So we were always friends with dog, and we used to hunt with dogs. There was no concept that we right. are not killing. Right. Them, you know. Right. So that's why I said maybe we are designed like that. And not maybe I I think I believe that. But there is something about evolution, no? You know, we can't talk what our ancestors. And did. then you said that can you eat raw, like raw mm. meat? Khake mm-hmm. dikhao. Mm. So I can say the same thing ki ap raw chane khake dikhao. I can eat. No, you can eat. Come you, on. You you you, you, you cannot you compare say, it to meat at all. No 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 no. You can't take a handful of kacha rice or kacha rajma and eat that. What happened in the middle in the evolutionary process? There there's something that. something remarkable that happened that changed the whole evolution mm. that made us what we are mm. do you know what i'm talking about mm. i'm talking about fire mm. you know fire, we can't go hunt and eat kachcha meat we can't mm. but if i cook it it becomes more bioavailable to me you can't go eat kachcha garbanzo beans or chickpeas you can't you can't even bite them you can't even, yeah you can't so, but you can still eat a fruit Yeah, 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 yeah. Of course, so, of course. I'm so, saying, okay, yeah, yeah. Of course, I'm saying. I'm saying that we are designed like that. I believe that we are designed like that. We, since we can't eat grains, you can't say that you weren't designed to eat grains. You can't. Someone can't come to me and tell me that okay, you aren't designed to eat meat because I know I can cook it and I can eat it. I can digest it right. as long as I'm digesting it. Right. And I also believe that most of the people who turn vegan, most of the people, mm-hmm. the ones that I've spoken to, mm-hmm. illness triggered this most of the times. Okay. Something happened to the gut. And they're like, dude, I can't digest protein, meat, not protein, but meat and all that. Mm-hmm. Which makes sense. They they just binge on meat and they just don't take fiber and they mm-hmm. fuck their health up mm-hmm. and eat other stuff. So that is my thing. So okay. I want to know so, so because I so my point was that it's really hard to change someone's mind mm-hmm. unless the person you know the way you felt something very strongly towards animals. So right. that might take a person to veganism. Otherwise, I spent a night convincing my f- फ्रेंड कि भाई खाना शुरू कर दे सब्जियां मैं खाता हूं चिकन वगैरह पर मैं उसको बोल रहा हूं कि नहीं तू खाना शुरू कर दे इट्स गुड फॉर द प्लेनेट एंड वी आर नॉट किलिंग एनीवन राइट 
but it doesn't happen it doesn't work like that actually i don't believe that approach what you're saying i think every every kind of approach works like some people are you don't know what triggers a person sometimes aggression does yeah. I, and i know people who have like for me my friend pushed me if i had not i knew like how to fight subconsciously i knew that you know maybe it might happen you know hmm. if it's happening in us and all of that it might be happening in india like how are we you know sustaining and the biological logic and all of that was there in my mind but yeah. unless he pushed he pushed me into seeing that video like yeah. take you see it yeah. you watch it and i change there are people you know everything works you know sometimes aggressive approach also works yeah. so sometimes it's like it takes someone to tell you like you know what you are doing is wrong mm. or what you are doing is right you know it does so i any found any kind of activism works there are people even meat eaters are super aggressive they are yeah. really aggressive yeah. Of, and even we are, you know, it's like it's not personal choice because there's a victim involved. This whole personal choice thing is not a right, uh, you know, thing because there is a victim involved. It's just that we are not seeing it as a victim hmm. because we are conditioned. Our social conditioning is like that, and it's always any kind of movement you see from racism or sexism, everything has evolved. You know, like you know, the truth was initially everyone said no, this is not right. Hmm. Eventually, it turned around because. I- I don't That's, think this is a social justice are, moment. I, I, this is yeah. a social, it is not it is no longer a lifestyle it's no longer a diet it's a movement for the animals it's a liberation movement because these animals will not be into existence if we don't breed them you know they are bred into existence most of the industry the entire industry thrives on you know breeding them they're not they don't fall from you know like yeah, the sky yeah. like and they are for us to eat they're bred into existence so so in the west yeah but let's talk india In India, pop- also it happens. Where, no, it happens. But here, the population is above one billion, and you have to feed. People have started blaming agriculture as well. So most of the meat eaters mm-hmm. and all, they've started uh, blaming agriculture. Like tofu kills more. Uh, But do they know that for the one pound of meat, how much of gallons of water and how much of yeah, yeah, same, uh, same. Uh, land is used? So, so that so, grain yeah. can be used to feed like more people than feed them. I agree. I agree. And so, the same thing goes for tofu. big to prepare it tofu you need to destroy a lot of land the lot of animals the lot of uh, so, uh, you know the, the uh, what do you call the ecosystem gets destroyed because i'm not saying because you are creating a land mm-hmm. which will be only conducive to grow tofu so all the life forms the soil it gets destroyed it's like it's a process but it's it's a uh... so, so it's, the point is that people are blaming each other instead of coming out with good regulation so people are against the vegans don't accept dairy as well right they don't yeah, they, they don't, don't. They, no animal actually nothing no, that no. comes from animal so no, i don't know the exact number but millions of lives in india are dependent on you know there are tribes in jammu i'm talking about my place right mm-hmm. so there are certain tribes like uh, uh, unko hum gujjar bakarwal bolte hain there okay. are, jo wahan pe hain and they are shepherds mostly mm-hmm. their livelihood and it has been happening since ages okay it is dependent on pastoral and you know they uh, graze their cows lambs whatever they have mm-hmm. they live on that they mm-hmm. eat their cheese and they even slaughter them when they have to eat right and it has been happening since generations right if something like that can be you know from i don't know how but you have to balance it out right there are like millions of people dependent on milk and all so how do you propose i mean it's very stupid so, no it is no it is not stupid it's very valid that's what is happening in the west now people who the farmers who used to you know get who were into dairy farming they're switching to alternative milks like yeah, yeah. so if one industry shuts another industry opens it's right. not it's a cycle you know if something for a demand suppose for demand for product a hmm. falls there always be an alternative and that b product b which is an alternative will have its own industry because it, it is a cycle so yeah i think market it is, market it is never know. like just like the you're saying the shepherds yeah they will find some other alternative something will come up maybe i don't know they'll be very aggressive to this statement when they say they'll find something else because it, it they're not fine it will automatically get generated yeah. you know created But because the, you're creating a vacuum so something else will come now now you see in india only for the last 5 years initially there was nothing like only soy milk only one brand hmm. was available yeah Now you see. So, <laughs> yeah. no, I wanted to ask you something. Yeah. So, is you need to raise. Sorry, I'm not talking. Yeah. Uh, is it more expensive for the farmers to get into vegan milk production or like uh, tofu manufacturing and all? Uh, actually, and no, it is not. If you see, if you know, there is a uh, you know, there's a factory called a company called Chetrans. If you know. 
and things like to all uh, soy grows a lot in india in fact a lot of soy goes abroad from here to ma- you know like produce milk abroad so there are very lot of local things that can be grown here and milk can be produced like rice you can do rice milk rice milk is really good you can uh, i think uh, almonds are like in the north so right. you can do almond milk so it is very local like the guys who are growing almonds they can get into am- almond milk manufacturing you know hmm. so stuff like that so it it always an opportunity gets created like when the demand increases it does create that brings me to deficiencies it's another major issue yeah. and since you are a vegan since 10 years yeah. i don't see any you know uh, yeah. maybe do you, are you regular with your blood lipids your tests or anything <laughs> yeah i have been doing it uh, so last uh, about 3 years back there was this some test happening in my society some bone okay. density test uh-huh. which my mom was actually i was curious i was not like i didn't have uh-huh. any problem but i was very curious because i've been vegan for last 5 years and have we even cribs about all these b12 deficiency and stuff like that so i was like okay and the calcium thing that's such yeah. a major thing like dood ne piya to calcium kaise milega that's, that's like, like such vitamin a k2 that, that, that they are related so, with uh, stable uh, thing that indian parents also say dood ne piya to calcium Exactly, but I will tell you the other side of it as well. Hmm. So before that, so then I uh, there was this test happening, okay, and I went and I was like curious, so I hmm. went and got it done. And when the results came, the guy was like, "Aapka to bahut achcha bone density hai, hmm. like above average. So aap bahut dairy lete hain kya?" Is the question he asked hmm. me, and I said, "Five years se nahi le rahi hu, hmm. bilkul bhi nahi le rahi hu." Right. And he looked at me like, "What?" What are you saying? But, but did you check the B12 levels? B12, it's always been good. It's always I mean, been good. Yeah, so it never affected, good. like it never affected. Right. It but didn't. but you know that it's not the same with everyone, right? Because right. people are getting deficient. So is there a proper way to follow? See, I'll because you, you are leaving a lot. I'll right? tell you, B12 is bacteria. Okay, it comes from the. Uh, it's what happens is we wash our fruits a lot, vegetables a lot. Right. It's actually found in like dirt, okay. like in mud. and in water and all of that and we process our stuff a lot so meat eaters equally have that issue i have a neighbor who is a hardcore red meat eater and mm-hmm. he is so severely deficient usko to he had to actually get injections okay. and all yeah, of that some people are some yeah. people are so it yeah. basically so, it uh, helps you uh, produce more red blood cells yes. b12 yeah? yes and iron and red blood cells yes. and uh, the only source is either you fortify your food So uh, or supplement yeah or animal products see i will tell you animal products also it is not like it doesn't go bio even animal products these days are very processed so yeah. you are killing it yeah. in the process the best way is that if you are deficient just get your get yourself uh, like get the injections or have supplement okay. there is no harm in having supplement suppose like that one tablet will give hmm. you what you require so what's the harm like i am not totally against i'm not against supplements at all if you are deficient will that work with children it works with everyone Kids. it works okay. with everyone so another question that you yeah. know i i usually i'm not trying to target but i really want there are these conflicting questions mm-hmm. that that's why i keep yeah, on popping them so let's say you not let's say you are a vegan right now yeah. and once your kid crosses the age where the kid doesn't need breastfeeding anymore right yeah after that are you okay with giving the kid supplements so you just three or four okay so and at that time i think that's the age where kids need a lot of nutrition like they are, they are like very active and they burn right. a lot right and they are growing they need right. Right. and if they are deficient at that age right. it will affect the whole life correct disease is everything correct. because de- i think personally i think deficiency is one of the most dangerous things that can happen right. to a person right. so uh, is it okay because agar if i think let's uh let's imagine that my mother is a vegan right mm. so my mother was a vegan when i when i was she wasn't but mm. i'm imagining mm. yeah. if she was and if she found out because vegan people are getting deficient it's on the internet it's everywhere people aren't maybe doing it properly yeah. but since they are deficient in many and they are getting they're always most of them are skinny if they're not supplementing somehow <laughs> that's what i see that's what i oh, see oh god so so yeah, yeah but but it's there you can't deny but it's the there worst, but the uh, 
world's strongest guy is a vegan. Come on, you can't say that. That's okay, I don't know about it. We'll, yeah, we'll check. Can you check world's guy. strongest guy? Yeah. We'll check. We'll Budrak's name is some Budrak's. So check it out. So so. Virat yeah. Kohli is turned vegan. Has turned vegan. Yeah, for the last. You've not read. Come on. Vegetarian or vegan? Why do you guys not read like good news, man? Do you read all the news? No, because I want to. I want to. I I heard that he turned vegetarian. He's vegan for the last. You see, Virat Kohli. Because and Anushka. Anushka turned vegetarian. He is turned vegan. He wants to have a hair cut. Oh, all right. Check check. But Serena he, Williams is vegan. So, Venus Williams. They are just vegan. They are all vegans. The list They're is, raw vegans. Yeah, okay. the list is like long. You see, what if top athletes are vegans? Yeah. Why are they vegan? Like, oh, Patrick Budruk, na? Babunia. Yeah, yeah. Good. German man, da na? Yeah. Ha. Yeah. Okay. Pretty cool. So I need to study about these people, yeah. but yeah, good examples. I'm not saying. Yeah, the lots actually. There are plenty of them. Yeah, they're doing. Most good. of the athletes. Okay. Are vegan or plant-based during most of their times because their recovery is better and stuff like that. They might not be vegan, ethically vegan. They might hmm. not be, but they most of them follow plant-based diets. Plant-based diets. Yeah. They do. Hmm. Even Nadal, I think, is either vegan. Uh, the singer vegan, Nadal. No, the uh, the player. What's his name? Nadal. Nadal. Yeah. Are you talking about yeah. Nadal? Oh, okay. What Nadal is? I don't know. Rafael Nadal. Yeah, I'm yeah. not a sports person. So sorry. Okay. <laughs> so yeah, about that. Yeah. So about the kids thing that you're saying. Yeah. See, if the uh, if the mother has properly breastfed them yeah. and weaned them off after a certain age, most of the mothers don't do that. They're right. lazy, so they wean them off early and they put them off, put them on like other animals' milk, like cow's milk or whatever. But I have friends who are like have had vegan pregnancies, and their kids are like the pregnancy and plus post that mm. they've been like the kids are vegan from the birth, and they have not really had deficiencies. And if they do, they give them supplements. Right. Because at least from what I know, I know like four five of them are my friends, and right. none of them have really had any issues. Right. In fact, their immunity, the kids are more like immune. The, their own like friends and all, they fall sick all the time. But these kids are not like they're mm. all the time like they're strong and. Their immunity is much better. They don't fall sick so fast. Right. So it is not the case. Have you ever thought about this? That there is no uh, research material uh-huh. when it comes to studying vegans because there is no second generation to vegans. Ah, uh, okay. I would like to correct you there. There is uh, there is this study called the China study. China study. Yeah. Okay. China being the largest population in the world. Right. There is a beautiful book. And it's been done extensively in the in China, and uh-huh. there's a whole literature and research on vegans. So you need to read that. I'm not recollecting yeah, the name that, of the there, guy. Yeah, there might the doctor, be a book, but there's no civilization or any part of the world that mm-hmm. has, you know, let's say this country mm-hmm. has been vegan since two or three years. That gives us research material. It's all about research. That right? if it's good mm-hmm. and if it's not causing harm, mm-hmm. I'm on board. Mm-hmm. I'm on board. Mm-hmm. It's that simple. Mm-hmm. But if people are getting serious deficiencies, or you know, if even meat eaters are, it's not like yeah, meat eaters. Yeah, are. It's not, it's yeah, this, they are. Yeah, they are. The deficiency thing is very screwed. Actually, it's not like that. It's, because the other not, market needs to, you know, yeah, it promote. Is, yeah, they, I'll tell you, the pharmaceutical industry, the medical industry, they're all hmm. in, like they want doctors. How the hell are doctors going to survive? Everyone is healthy. That's doctors, one big issue. Yeah, it is. A, it is a yeah. major. You just think logically. If you all are, for, if all of us don't fall sick. Yeah. And we're all healthy. We're right. not going to doctors. What are the doctors going to do for mm. a living? But same, they will always scare you with things. Yeah, they they, they they want you to ask. Eat. Okay, ask any any doctor. Okay, huh. I I was going to say like something else, but ask any doctor basic questions about nutrition. They don't know. I I know. have experienced they, know, they don't know. Though they won't even know like cholesterol and iske beech ka difference. Okay? They don't. They're they that don't. bad. They will give you medicine and they will tell you that okay you can start eat, questioning them. You can you know. eat whatever you want, yeah. which is not the fact. You they, start questioning yeah. them, you know like wh- how much knowledge they have. Have you seen cafes inside hospitals? They're all junk food, right? Yeah. Have you, have you seen? <laughs> yeah. Literally. Hospitals. Like people getting out of the room and they're like, yeah, yeah. okay, let's feed on. Yeah. It so is yeah, that bad. That makes sense. It is a whole. It is see. Uh, the pharmaceutical industry is in like whatever like they are hand in hand with the uh, medical and all of that yeah. so how are they going to survive it's a but many very interesting lines suna tha they were uh, criticizing doctors and this guy came up with something so brilliant he said ki agar uh, doctors ka uh, if doctors business won't work how will the bmw own its money 
so you see the relation like how will the doc- so it's like they were telling ki doctors are the ones who get all the big fancy cars yeah, no, and all so, so how so it's all connected that's yeah. what i wanted to say it that's is all connected yeah. and uh, my most of the friends i know na like, right. they are also against vaccination they are hmm. against all of this and the kids are it's it's an industry they make you feel that you know they instill that fear in you that if you don't do this this will happen yeah and but it is a vaccination fact. there was a point when vaccinations were really important it is still It is still. Yeah, it is still. So it's not right to outrightly completely it's say that the science is waste no, and they are but they are making money on people's misery. Yes, they I agree. Making, I agree. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, they, they will create this thing like oh, if you don't do this then you're going to like you know end up and fall sick and stuff like that. I think like India that. is a country where uh, a maximum number of people are having antibiotics unnecessarily. Yeah. Mere family mein agar kisi ko zukam ho jata hai halka sa jao pehle antibiotic kha lo. antibiotic destroys your body of course it it, it, it messes yeah. you up. i know it will save you from you know if you have a serious viral or anti fungal or I bacterial mean, infection kind of stuff, yes. you need you need yeah. in dire situations you do, but people are just popping antibiotic like kuch ho gaya ha antibiotic it's a psychological thing that oh, if you have a medicine means kuch, kuch and, and then after 10 years they say ki te- like yeah then after it. 10 years their gut biome gets destroyed and yeah. then they say that ki kya ho gaya hamare yeah. sath Yeah. Let's get back to your yeah. thing, like your you <laughs> animal cruelty, right? Yeah. So you have um, uh, participated in activism yeah. and gathered a lot. You travel for this. Yeah. So let's hear about it, like everything. Okay. So yeah, I mean uh, activism. Lot of I like I said, every activism works. I have done leafletting. Right. I've actually done potlucks where I've actually got people, you know, ask them. I asked them to just bring some vegan food. If they have doubts, I told them how to veganize their food. Right. Bring them. Like and you know, show documentaries and have a gathering. And we are not that boring. We also have parties and all. We do that <laughs> also. So it's not like we are very boring people. So we have also done that. Right. So I've done activism of all kinds. How, how is a vegan doing. party? I'm really curious. Like it's just a party. Come on, it's just vegan food, but it's not a vegan party. A vegan party. party. Yeah, it's just a party. So it's like alcohol food. is no problem, right? Yeah. So no, alcohol. but alcohol also there are some brands uh, which are not vegan because so they, they might yeah they might be contamination. Not contamination. They are uh, filtered. Some of the processes they filter to like through uh, fish bladder and stuff. Oh, oh okay. So yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> animals are everywhere. Man. Yeah, they're everywhere. Like unimaginable places. Yes, yeah, they are yeah. everywhere. Like <laughs> so. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, so yeah. I mean, we've done that. We have also done play, a thing where we we have we have been sponsored by a lot of NGOs and uh-huh. organizations with uh, you know those sets where we can actually put them on and on the road we tell people to. No, check see videos. I will ask them whether they're vegetarian, vegan, right, and or non-vegetarian, and then talk to them about it. A lot of people have actually. So we started off as a very small, like say twenty, twenty-five people who are vegans and activists, and now the network has grown into like hmm. we have like seven WhatsApp groups because okay. I think two fifty is the limit. So that's seven fifty to se- uh, two. Sorry, two fifty to seven, whatever that number is. Hmm. That many people have, and every time we do activism, we get more people in. There right. are people who. Or like because you know we we are so conditioned like our eyes are closed and we are conditioned okay so we don't really see it's mm. right there like even I was like I never I mean I knew like milk comes from a cow it doesn't like but I never thought like you know the what can it be like the cruelty behind it you know mm. we don't think we just it just comes and it's in our glass and we drink it so we don't think like what is the Like we don't backtrack any of it. It's just yeah. convenient. I think I personally like think that, that so. me as a media, if I have to introspect yeah. and say, why I know that animals are treating, are getting treated, you know, yeah. horribly, but why am I still? I I often ask this question yeah. that why am I still promoting it? And I've concluded, and I will, you know, uh, take uh, a lot of people with me with this, mm. that I think we are just arrogant, plain arrogant. It, this is arrogance yeah, for me. I I know. I I love the taste. It is. it is delicious for me. Yeah. I've grown up eating meat. Yeah. So it's a family thing. My family loves non-veg. Right. So there is no such thing that okay you can't eat it because it's natural. And when I see the sufferings of the animal, I can't bring myself to you know okay I will not because I contribute to the market to the uh, industry right. Yeah. So you if need I someone sp- else to do it. Exactly. I if I if I I'm okay with hunting but you can't do that anymore. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So I have someone else to do my work and the way they are doing is horrible. Yeah. I totally agree. So there, uh, for me, there has to be regulation. I know for you, it's like complete change. There is no regulation involved. There is no kinder way to kill an animal. There is no kinder way. 
the only there is no way when when all. killing is included or uh, when killing is taken killing. into consideration yes but when you have to uh, milk a cow or when you have to create dairy or eggs or, there has to be a, a proper i'm talking about not killing there is no proper way there has to be there, there has to no. be because pe- that's what i'm saying uh, the shepherds gave, over there they who gave you the right to like uh, you know milk a cow it's no, an animal no. kingdom How yeah i know i know not, because we are just we just turned civilized yeah that's the part of that change that you're talking about is ego it's not ego okay? no it so, was it was no, survival no it was it was survival it, in the beginning it was before, yeah it, that's what i'm saying so we evolved come on we can't be like run back to our stuff we are now evolved we have alternatives we have, there are there are things i can understand like yes that's what i'm saying so we need at least nothing. two generations of research that's what i think okay. if we get an area where people two generation like iska dada bhi vegan tha ye bhi vegan hai i know such people i know such people i know people have been vegan for last 60 70 years 60 70 years is not research material we are talking 5000 we are talking thousands and thousands of years uh, humans we are talking I, humans you need to read i think the china study i am not i will sure, i will i have written it down i have written yeah, it down there is uh, i am not sure it was done pretty like before so and it was done for a very what? long See, period your of time veganism well. is very new relatively it is it it's is like not new that's what i'm trying to tell you it is not, not including honey milk it is absolutely new no compared to no, I'm, just saying, i'm just saying i'm just saying compared <laughs> okay you okay you're hell bent but you're hell bent but i just want you to think about it for one second because we've been consuming meat since centuries huh. right hmm. and there is no civilization that has been vegan that's what i'm saying there's a, there's no record for that you can check you can check there is no record that okay this country has been vegan or this state has been vegan since it's not a record or whatever you're saying but there so are I'm people saying, in some all i'm saying is all i'm saying is where they, they don't have concept of milk at all people Japan, live I think if i'm not people live the longest they when they are not eating meat i agree they it's are they are they are their healthiest they are the healthiest. Yeah. they just have i they have once a week or something that's what you know you must have heard about blue zones mm-hmm. okinawa and few districts mm-hmm. where people are centenarians they live beyond 100 years mm-hmm. so their diet has a minimum of meat that is once a week or twice a week that's mm-hmm. or twice a month or something like that mm-hmm. so they do consume but their lifestyle is different they live healthy they breathe clean air mm-hmm. but my thing is that once you have two three generations you are strong enough on research basis that you can tell people that okay veganism is there's, also healthier i think it's i personally think it's too soon research. to there's tell people there's a lot people. of research may not be just for like one part like right. like a whole veganism thing but there are like a lot of researches done where it is proved that milk the casein which is there is carcinogenic it is it is a switch that creates now and cancers are linked to Dairy yeah they are they will link cancer to everything i know no that. it I is that. a fact i have i have a friend who just you know she just survived breast cancer the first thing when she was detected the doctor said you have to stop it you have to stop milk yeah. she's off milk but would you deny that there are people happening. who have been eating and surviving easily dairy meat because i know many people right so i think it's subjective to okay. straight away target because don't no, you know people no, who eat no it is a fact i have seen i have seen if you eat more of red meat and stuff yes you're going to kill yourself pretty soon she's a vegetarian she still so she yeah. had milk and all yeah, so yeah she did she was a vegetarian and she it was yeah if there me. are direct links that the people who are, uh, who are reversing their lifestyle diseases just by going vegan it's not just it will change it, your life it, it will is, give you more I'm years saying, i know that i'm not I just agree. saying for the fact yeah. i know people i there are programs that are happening in the hmm. us there are actually rehabilitation centers where people are actually reversing their third and fourth stage cancer without touching one drop of medicine and only on vegan diet yeah i've read it, about it that it is there it I is there it's happening and it's not just for cancer it is for diabetes my own uncle aunty here in pune they turn vegan people have reversed autoimmune diseases with vegan yeah they have not vegan for sure oh, serena williams yeah serena williams uh, auto yeah i was not remembering why and she's raw right. she's not even she doesn't eat cooked food it heals it heals it absolutely heals, it heals it, it does. totally heals and it is there are there are a lot of researches just that most of it is not out but a lot of it is happening uh-huh. and things are changing you go to the west i traveled recently all the vegan places that i visited 90% of the people who were in there were non vegans they were meat eaters right they were not why are they coming and having you know like because vegan. vegans make awesome desserts come on they, it's not just <laughs> that, that's the reason why i come to your cafe every single day <laughs> it's not just desserts it's like food yeah, the, 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 they're alternatives yeah. i had 
like i have never written me okay so okay. i but i wanted to get some inspiration oh you should have tried once <laughs> ah, no i don't <laughs> never felt delicious at okay, all okay let's talk about taste it's delicious <laughs> it's dead body like seriously <laughs> that's right okay so i i traveled i wanted to see like you know i wanted to try how uh, mock me taste i wanted to get some inspiration hmm. for my cafe and i went to some of these places and the food the most of the people who were there were like non vegetarians hmm. and they were just enjoying the food they were loving the food and and i was like oh that's how meat looks and tastes it's disgusting like it was shreddy and all of that because i'm not eating meat so I had this meat eater friend who was for, I mean vegan but formerly a meat eater. Mm. So he was like, "This is so good. This is so good." And I'm like, uh, "I don't, I don't think this is good." Actually, now you get really good mock meat also. You get amazing mock meat. You just cannot yeah, distinguish. Yeah, they, they call it oh, vegan chicken. So I remember I yeah. asked you that. Oh, vegan! It's red chicken. No, yeah. they call it vegan chicken. So they serve it, uh, and their dish name is vegan chicken something. So I even asked her once that was the chicken vegan before. <laughs> that was a bad joke, I know, but yeah. Yeah, it's like how to eat a chicken salad. Like give the chicken salad. So, yeah. yeah, yeah. So yeah, so the you meat, have to admit. No, the, but the meat. The vegan memes are horrible. They are like hilarious. Okay, let's not do that. Okay, <laughs> so yeah, I mean. The effort the companies are putting in to get alternatives is incredible. Right. Incredible. Like the there was is, this. Uh, is soy the main product? No, not no. really. They're doing it with lentils. They're doing it okay. with a lot of different things. Soy is right now predominantly what okay. they're using. Okay. But there are alternatives. Like mm. I don't like soy. I mean, I. But I personally don't think they are doing it to find alternatives to save the environment. They're just doing it because people are switching and they need to. So it, it doesn't matter. Shift. It's like yeah, an industry. It's if the industry shifts and more people are into vegetables and less meat it is going to help eventually like you are and it is not like a, it's, it, these are not these uh, you know these brands are mm. not like you know like small time people who are doing it mm. they are actually big firms that are putting money at whole foods and, putting money then there's and uh, I'm scared of big it's... firms because where yeah. money goes yeah it, no it, but they are not they are not let's hope so no mm-hmm. because it's very clear in the in the west in mm. india there can be jhol and stuff like that mm-hmm. and people get you know food poisoned and stuff and you know nothing will happen but in the west it is not the case even if you don't mention the slightest thing if you have put and you have not mm. mentioned it you are screwed you can yeah, be sued yeah, for millions are. of dollars you are liable for that and they are very yeah, yeah. so yeah, this is not going to happen laws. yeah the laws are very strict there mm. even if bigger firms the bigger firms are putting money because they are no longer doing well with what they were exist- right. existingly doing it right now yeah. you know like maybe they were producing milk and they are no longer doing you go to the west even non vegans they won't have they have oat milk and i have seen i went to the like I, when i was in france i wanted to like get something get a you know like a vegan milk thing so i went there and i was not understanding okay everything was written in french that was such a pain and <laughs> so i was trying to you know i was like with my google translator yeah. and translating <laughs> and this guy next to me saw me struggling okay ah. so even the french people are like really arrogant they don't like they don't talk okay they're right. very snotty and stuff This guy saw me really struggling. Okay, I was actually like typing one one word and seeing what it means and stuff. So he just asked me like, "Are you looking for vegan milk?" So I was mm-hmm. like, "Yeah." And can you tell me like, is there any yeah. non-vegan thing in this? Huh. So he saw it. He was like, "No, no, this is vegan." And I was like, "I." Then I thought maybe he's also standing in the same section, so he also may be vegan. Yeah. So I was like, "Are you vegan?" He's like, "No, I'm not vegan, but I love the vegan milk." Yeah. And he was buying vegan milk and was. This I saw the same trend in Germany also. But do you see it happening in India? India, me as of now, say Delhi, what is happening? Is the price is an issue? Yes, yeah. it's expensive. Yeah. Because we were talking to another vegan guest. Yeah. She is into fitness. Anvi, I think you yeah. know. Yeah. Yeah. So pretty cool girl. She knows yeah. her shit. She's yeah. pretty, you know, well versed with her. She's a nutritionist. So yeah, yeah, yeah. She knows. So. she yeah she said that it gets a bit expensive right now and maybe in india because yeah uh, so you've been running your your cafe the real green yeah. cafe right yeah yeah it's been how long we will turn 4 years in june 4 years in june yeah so i am guessing most of the people who come to your cafe are either curious people or people from outside like i'm the footfall is like yeah. people from outside must be yeah. you know yeah so Do, do you see India becoming like this? We have a lot of curious Indians coming in now, right. a lot because they've just curiously heard somewhere what vegan is. Hmm. Actually, they're more curious to know like how the hell are people survive? I mean, how the hell are the dishes being made without milk? 
बिकॉज़ दिस ऑल कंडीशन की बटर के बिना कैसे होगा चीज के बिना कैसे होगा दे हैव दोस क्वेश्चंस एंड समटाइम्स लाइक मोस्ट ऑफ द टाइम्स आई रियली व्हेन समवन कम्स एंड प्लेस अ ऑर्डर विद मी आई डोंट गो अराउंड टेलिंग देम इट्स वीगन एंड ऑल ऑफ दैट आई जस्ट टेल देम आई जस्ट टेक देयर ऑर्डर दैट्स इट and i like to you know like i like i want them to try because if i tell them beforehand ki you know ek cashew ke sath bana raha hai so it is a mental block and i've yeah. seen it before i used to do it before so i've learned so you can substitute for cheese is cashew right that's what Actually, they usually use you can do with a lot of things you can uh-huh. do with nuts you can do with seeds you can do with a lot of things i do it with does cashew does it does it get that thread kind of it does it my does? mozzarella does it does yeah. it may not be like completely because see there are I like to keep my food fresh and right. I like to not keep it very processed. Yeah. I can put like 10 chemicals into my cheese and make it look exactly the way a mozzarella cheese yeah. looks. And that's what's how the fun then. Yeah, but then what's the fun if I'm saying it's going to be healthy then people yeah. expect it to be like without preservatives, without yeah. chemicals. And honestly since I'm not a formally trained uh, chef or anything, right. I don't even know Like and your staff, your staff, they wear this T-shirt that says <laughs> yeah, badass, 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 badass vegans. Yeah. Are they, they are even they are vegans? Yes. Did you are, change them into? No, they are not. Like no, I did not change them into it. Like did you tell them that this is the concept and they agreed to it? Not really. I actually when I brought them in to the cafe, I trained them up like okay. we veganized stuff and all. Right. And uh, we used to do a lot of, we still do a lot of documentary screenings. So they have actually seen. they were dog lovers they actually had animals in their farm they are from nepal mm-hmm. so they are in like very small villages in the you know hills and all and they have actually grown with animals and stuff like that and you know what's really weird <laughs> yeah <laughs> that you are actually putting this thing in people's mind young mind huh. and the thing that you're putting is absolutely right you you are telling them that okay animals are getting harmed but most of the people will look at you and yeah. they will say that the, these guys are doing something evil this cult this you know yeah. they call they, they, you know this cult this community is doing something evil they are now indoctrinating children and they are just, you yeah. know changing their mindset yeah. but i think what vegans are doing ethically i think it's it's required right now uh just a statistic here hmm. in uk like 7% of the people are vegans hmm. and out of that 7% i think if i'm not wrong i think 2 to 3% or i think 4% of that percentage are uh, like teenagers okay from like 14 to maybe like 25 or something that is the age group hmm. of people who are turning vegan so a lot of young vegans turning vegan because there's a, the awareness is more And that's at that age more. the mind is very impressionable that's where but you But then it is changing because you're seeing it I am the best the concept It is, is very good. difficult to change a 30 year old's mind right now I I tried it right I tried yeah. it it's very difficult they don't they were like ha chandra Because you're socially con- conditioned that's what yeah. your parents told you to do and that's what you have been told to do so you are doing that it's like you'll find very few people who think you know who would really like you know like listen to what is happening and you know actually research and all of that yeah. they don't do it because yeah, नहीं है एंड कन्वीनियंस है ना सो इट्स इजी है उन लोगों को क्या फर्क पड़ता है कहां से आ रहा है क्या हुआ है पीछे दे डोंट केयर दे डोंट लाइक दे डोंट इवन वांट टू थिंक अबाउट इट बट इफ यू टेल देम देन मे बी अ सीड इज प्लांटेड यू नो मे बी इफ नॉट इमीडिएटली कभी तो सोचेंगे एंड एक्चुअली ऐसे ही हुआ है एक्टिविज्म आई नो पीपल हैव टर्न वीगन्स अभी दो तीन साल से बट दो तीन साल पहले जब मैं उनको अडॉप्शन कैंप से मिलकर कुछ भी बोलती थी वीगन के बारे में दिस गेट सुपर इरिटेटेड विद मी राइट व्हाई आर यू प्रीचिंग व्हाट इज दिस इन दिस एंड दैट and now those are the same people of turn vegan whatever like maybe wo do teen saal pehle jab hum ko like bolte rehte the to shayad unke dimag mein reh gaya and uh-huh. probably they research and they had a shift they right. changed now they are vegan so they are like actually doing activism more than me now uh-huh. so of course i don't have so much of time anymore to really yeah. do activism whatever no, no, no. i do is through the cafe now hmm. but yeah that's how it is and yeah let's talk about your statistics yeah we, we, i mean why not hey how much juice do we have in this one as long as that's good give me above 30 at least 46 oh and that, that doesn't show percentage but the bars that must have turned yellow by now yeah got one one then that's we'll stick to this then okay yeah so what you got like so actually sure. some of these very cool facts uh-huh. uh let's hear them veganism yeah so there's this uh, i don't know if you have watched this documentary called cowspiracy Ka- no it no. is a beautiful documentary it has nothing to do with animals or the way animals are treated it uh-huh. is basically about the environment okay it's about this guy who is a hardcore environmentalist 
and he was doing so much, but there was nothing happening, you know, nothing was, you know, the, there was still pollution, there was still this, there was yeah. that. So then he actually went deeper into the whole uh, study of what was happening and he touched upon this thing called animal agriculture. That okay. is what our dairy and meat industry right. is today. Right. And like how animals are bred and there's an industry. So that, mm. and that breeding is called animal agriculture. It's a whole you know industry. Mm. And he used to do a lot of research and he started researching and he was like, okay, like this, why is this Greenpeace or the worldwide World Wildlife Fund, or whatever the WWF, yeah. these guys, or all the top people who are fighting for you know pollution and all of this, not talking about animal agriculture mm. at all. Like why is everyone just talking about you know stop using a car, use public transport, stop using this, you know like stop using uh, like buy you know don't waste water or uh, uh, switch off the lights. Mm. You're wasting electricity. Why is no one talking about this, which is so much more than everything, what they are talking about? Because there are billions of dollars involved. Yeah, because <laughs> all the people who are actually funding these organizations mm. are, you know, people like a KFC right. or a McDonald's and yeah. all of that. So they don't want, if you go to the cancer website, you'll have like recipes and in the recipe you'll have like meat and all of that. Yeah. So it's like when they know that that meat is causing cancer, why are they still having it? So he did a lot of research over this whole thing hmm. and he made a documentary called Cowspiracy. Okay. So basically Cowspiracy talks about the environmental aspect of ag animal agriculture and there are real cool facts in this. Uh, you know, uh, you can, uh, by turning vegan, you can actually save about 30 animals annually, like every year. If a single animals. person turns Yeah, if vegan. a single person turns vegan. Hmm. And uh, he, so if you see the movie, he talks a lot about the environmental and the carbon footprint. Right. By turning vegan, you, your own footprint can be reduced by like literally half. Okay. And these are facts by from the movie itself. Right. What, I, what I wanted to share because there are people who, there are a lot of aspects like why someone wants to turn vegan. Not everyone is hmm. pro-animal. Hmm. They may be like, you know, environmentalist or they may be like for health or fitness or whatever. So hmm. these are facts that they should know. And also... If you turn vegan, you are saving 1100 gallons of water every day mm. because from the time an animal is taken, yeah. it, is, you know, it comes into existence till it is going to meet and the process, the amount of water that we waste mm. is like a lot. So by turning vegan, like 1100 gallons of water, I don't know the conversion of gallons to liter. One gallon is four liters, I guess. Uh, so 4400 we liters. Do the maths, yeah. Wow. Okay. <laughs> And yeah, so you know you. Eleven hundred. Yeah, eleven hundred gallons. Oh, that's four thousand one hundred seventy-six. That's a lot of water. Yeah. That's a lot of water per day. Yeah. Okay. And you must have heard of world hunger. That's a big situation, like a big issue huh. that is happening yeah. in African countries. That is happening because the uh, crop that they grow, like the corn and stuff. Countries like in the West, they take that whole thing and they feed it to animals. Yeah, they're green fed. Most they're of them. green fed. Corn most fed. Of them. Not even green, they're yeah, corn, fed. corn fed. Corn fed. That corn, that grain, which if we save up to 40, you can, you know, you can save up to 45 pounds of that grain every day. Okay. And that, if you do the maths, can help almost like 795 million people who don't have enough food to eat. Right. So the world hunger can actually be eradicated if that fodder, which they're actually feeding an animal. But even that fodder is GMO, right? You know that, right? It is GMO. Yeah. That there is controversy yeah. there also. But you know. But yeah, a, a step, hunger, a step you know, taken. Yeah. What you're not getting at all to eat, maybe <laughs> something better than you know dying of hunger. It makes sense. You know, yes. like when you're hungry, you're not going to look at yeah, GMO. GMO can make, yeah. You no, know, there are right. people dying out of starvation. Yeah. And it and that movie, if you see now, you'll really see, and you'll be like literally shocked like how do we like ignore such stuff you know like how <laughs> even yeah for uh, cow's milk it takes 880 gallons of, of water. water 880 okay and uh, one pound of beef hmm. takes 1800 gallons of water right so you just do the maths like what all we are wasting hmm. water land and uh, what, water uh, so there is uh, an industry which mm. is against all these mm. facts. Mm. So, w what counters do they produce? Uh, have Have you ever experienced or have you ever seen a documentary where they say 
to do this mm. or just, as i mentioned tofu and people have started turning against agriculture as well that mm. doesn't make mm. sense to mm. me people mm. are saying agriculture mm. destroys the uh, whatever mm. Mm. but in a country like india you can't feed a billion people without agriculture right you that can't. we yeah. are an agrarian economy yeah. Yeah. so yeah. <laughs> that's ridiculous yeah. just like i don't believe in when people say we weren't meant to eat meat mm. i simply don't agree that agriculture is not the right thing there mm. i consider both these sides stupid mm. Mm. so have you ever faced such you know heat or arguments or counters that okay this much tofu uh, destroys this much land this much blah blah but blah. you have to see i i've never actually uh, reached this stage mm-hmm. where tofu versus that was just an not, example okay? yeah, yeah no i'm not really <laughs> but since you're saying if you just do the maths right like yeah what? it's like huge have, that, yeah. yeah the difference is like un, like you can't even like compare, you can't like, argue with the facts i okay, maybe i'm true. not well versed with the facts but as, right now as i've heard yeah. yeah it makes all the sense to me no it's like you just see i'm pretty sure i don't think tofu takes so much of water like, <laughs> seriously like 1800 gallons of water i'm pretty sure it doesn't like cow's milk takes like 880 gallons yeah. and one dozen of like takes like 640 gallons like literally hmm. so i'm not pretty sure like tofu takes so much so i need to actually read and also cow poop methane okay. is like the largest greenhouse contributor it is yeah and 18% animal agriculture is like 18% of the greenhouse emissions are more than combined of all modes of transportation hmm. animal agriculture is hmm. contributing 18% and they'll always tell you you know like uh, use less vehicle hmm. go in cycle go use public transportation but this figure they'll never tell you this animal agriculture 18% is a huge number hmm. and they're talking about everything else so these are things which now it is coming out because people are turning vegan yeah. they are understanding and now the awareness is like the knowledge available is much more and mm. people are able to take that decision so now hopefully things will change and livestock covers like 45% of the earth's total land mm-hmm. 45 if if i'm not wrong cows per acre they talk like for rearing 10 cows it's like as big as one football ground or something and okay. the deforestation that's happening in amazon is mm-hmm. because of this because major reason is animal agriculture so mm-hmm. they're cutting down forests so that more number of uh, animal you know animal farms can mm-hmm. be like uh, whatever installed or whatever like what do you call, i don't know what they call it. but that will happen uh, that will also that's happen. happening that's yeah, actually but that will also happen when this industry grows because they have to create farms right once you create so, farms you destroy all the livelihood over there Yeah, but then it's already destroyed, right? So they can even alternate it there itself. They don't have to create, destroy some more land to create this. Since no, it's already example, once it's already destroyed, to, it's destroyed. Let, What let's say this it? part of uh, land you mm. need uh, to create, uh, you know, where you breed cows and all that, right? Mm. Same. Let's say veganism takes over, and then they are planting more, you know. specific foods hmm. that give hmm. you food both the market dictates basically yeah. Right? Yeah. so for that also you need to expand right so you are going to destroy eventually you won't have to not what existing itself will be enough you don't have to destroy more you won't have to destroy that whatever like suppose if this whole land is hmm. for animals right this whole land can be used for an alternative industry to why do they have to do another No, no. I'm just talking to uh, to But grow stuff. To grow stuff, you need land, right? Land is that land only, no? So you can't grow multiple stuff on single piece of land, right? You It's can, not... but then uh, you know that by that logic, I'm not really an agriculturist. But I think it would be better than I mean deforestation and stuff. I think there's something else also. I'm not very sure. Not hmm. very sure about yeah, it. Yeah, I mean, so even I am not an expert, but I'm yeah. just thinking about it. That so no, uh, I would just think when, when a land space. loses its nutrition, right? Yeah. The, uh, so so the nitrogen content gets yeah. lost yeah. either through yeah, yeah, yeah. planting something. So yeah. some of the lands are uh, conducive that they put uh, legumes or stuff hmm. that it, to an extent replenishes hmm. the nitrogen content, hmm. which helps in growth. But hmm. every land is not conducive for every single crop and once you start growing huh. so yeah i mean i'm just trying to see maybe that maybe i'm pretty sure this technology which yeah, will yeah, yeah. do something for that i'm pretty sure right because it is a movement happening like hmm. in the uk most of the dairy farmers are like all shutting their businesses and getting into alternative milks right. or alternative cheese i think in france there was this one story which i was reading very recently he was his whole family business was dead huh. the last 100 years or something right. and he recently shut and he's converted his whole farm into a cheese factory okay vegan cheese factory vegan cheese factory so yeah so there are like shifts are happening yeah. yes. and 
I'm pretty sure like West is like really doing very well. I'm hmm. pretty sure it trickled down and come to us too soon. And right. with people like us doing activism, I'm pretty sure that it will somehow shake and wake the conscience of people. So if not, maybe in like next one or two years, or at least next ten years, yeah, there is going to be a, a shift, shift yes. a big you, shift. Yeah. And we're going to see it because at the end of the day, human beings are pretty selfish. You know, once they know their health is not well, and they, they will, have they will to, change. yeah, they have, they have to, they have to. They will, and that's what is happening. I know many people who have who have just turned vegan because I, I, I told you, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> their health was screwed completely. So yeah. now they're proper, they're healthy, and all. They don't want they, to go back. They're like, if you go oh, back, don't. no. Okay. I know people who have, my uncle, auntie, my uncle had uh, like a combination of high BP and uh, uh, diabetes. Huh. He turned vegan right. but now it's been he's been vegan for the last four years uh-huh. and he's not had a single medicine and his diabetes is completely gone right and he's like i will never now that i know that that was the cause i'm not it's like unless you are like you like khatro ke khiladi or the people being around with your health i don't then i don't know but uh usually what happens is what i have seen is like when you turn vegan for health Hmm. You start exploring right. and you start reading and all of that, and then you reach to a different journey. Like, like maybe you start reading and then you're like, yeah, okay, I'm not harming animals bec- for because they're animals. I was doing it for my health. Hmm. But then eventually you'll start reading it and then it, yeah, it grows into you. And maybe they're like, no, I don't want to follow it. Maybe there mm-hmm. are people who switch back. There are people. There are many celebrities who do that. You know, yeah. they are plant based for some time, and everyone gets excited, and then they switch back. There are things, there are, you know, it's like why you turn vegan is a very important, uh, like, aspect to why you turn vegan and to stay, to stick on to it. Right. For me, it was animals. For me, it was purely animals. Yeah, I didn't fine. really yeah. care about my health. I still don't. Hmm. For me, a vada pearl is vegan, so I would have it. <laughs> I don't care if it's fried. Really, I don't care. But I get people in my cafe who are like, oh, baked hai kya, or oil free hai kya, and all of that. So, they are yeah. that kind of vegan and we are this kind of vegan. Are, are you into gymming or anything? No? no, I run sometimes, <laughs> yeah. but I'm pretty lazy. Yeah. <laughs> no, but, but but you run, yeah, right? You yeah, do something, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I do. Because people who are into physical activity, they yeah. are in, you know, they require more. They yeah. require more minerals and all. So yeah. they also get into. I have more. I have uh, friends. Okay, just uh, I think you might want to interview him too. He is mm-hmm. the world's first vegan to scale Mount Everest. He's yeah. an Indian mm-hmm. and he's a good friend of mine. Please recommend, please. Yeah, yes, I'll add to, to Kuntil. He is What's his name? Kuntil Joshir. Kuntil? Joshir. Joshir. Yeah. Okay. He's a good friend of mine. He's the first vegan. Oh, in the we world would love to have him over. To yeah. scale Mount Everest. Mount Everest. First yeah. Indian vegan to scale. I Mount. think uh, first, first vegan, vegan to itself. scale. Yeah. There was another vegan who died in the same week while scaling, but that was made a whole issue like she's vegan so she died I think it goes yeah, both ways yeah. I think promoting it that he was the first vegan to scale mouth is, is it as, was a, yeah. it's a promotion gimmick because he just he I, ne- he's not a, taking the effort away from that guy total see, respect for that guy but no, just saying that he's what, vegan he's the most he never said that he's vegan and then he scaled okay. he was vegan because he was vegan yeah. and he scaled mouth but the vegan he didn't community, use that yeah, but the vegan community needs yeah, a badge, right? And it's, it's people, justified. It's a war. It's like meat it is, because, yeah. But there are people who will be like, uh, the khauta. I'm like, so yeah, he's he a didn't vegan. eat proteins. He didn't, you didn't talk about where he gets his proteins from. Yeah. And even if you do, he's already scaled the Mount Everest. Mount Everest. Like, yeah, yeah, why not? Simple as that. <laughs> so yeah, you might want to, he's really, he's very inspiring. Mm. And he actually goes and does talks and stuff now. Because mm. everyone wants to like, hear him out. Hear right, story. Right. And he's so simple that, he, like, he's so down to earth, he, he know like that air about like oh I have scaled Mount Everest okay. and stuff, he's a super simple guy. I, I, I just know a handful of vegans, Yeah. like not more than, personally, I know um, a lot, but yeah. personally I know. Yeah. And vegans on the internet are very aggressive and violent, but all the five I know, right, uh, uh. they're like always cool, I mean, kya? like vegetable effect, like what, <laughs> they're like always chilled out in light and they're like so easy, always smiling, positive. I don't know. See, it's a mix of everything. <laughs> maybe Even maybe. meat eaters may be aggressive. Yeah, right? so I it's think like that. A, it's that was a joke. <laughs> no, I'm just telling you, it's a mix yeah. of everything. Yeah. Find all kinds of people. So yeah. It's always going to be a mix of things. So. <laughs> I, I think, Ashwari, it was a lot of fun talking to you. I still think that we have a lot more to discuss. Yeah. Some yeah. other time, some other episode, yeah. you come up with something new. Yeah. The so, debate is not over. No, no, no. <laughs> it was never a debate for me. That's what I just want to learn more so yeah. that. 
maybe I'll take a good smart decision after a few years. Yeah. Right now I know where I stand yeah. and I'm concrete with yeah. that. But yeah. why not? If something is better, why yeah. not? I'm open for it. Yeah. So yeah, I think that's about it. Thank you so much for doing this with us. Thank you. <laughs>